blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord is coming for it is at hand. Now therefore says the Lord God, turn to me with all of your heart with fasting and weeping and with mourning. So rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for He is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and He relents from doing harm. Who knows if He will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind Him. Blow the trumpet in Zion. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ this is twofold. This is not only for Zion, but you are Zion now. This is the call to the people of God in America and in the world. Consecrate a fast for such a time as this. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and nursing babes. Let the bridegroom go out from his chamber and the bride from her dressing room. Let the priest who minister to the Lord weep, weep, weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, Spare your people, O God. Spare your people, O God. And do not give your heritage to reproach that the nations should rule over them. Why would they say among the peoples, where is their God? I'm reading from the book of Joel this night. <clears throat> Chapter 2 is where the Word of God comes from. This is a fresh word from God. For the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, so welcome to testimony night. Wayne and Jennifer Sanford will be giving their testimony next Wednesday night at this time. I hope you join us then. But welcome via Facebook Live tonight for a very important message to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and for any and all that are watching tonight. Where is God in all of this? Where is God in all of this that's happening in our cities, in our county, in the state of Alabama, and in America, in the world? Where is God in all of this? Well, God is right in the middle. But He is calling His church to rise and shine to rise and shine for such a time as this. You see, brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the greatest opportunity that the church of Jesus Christ in this region and in the world has ever had for God's awakening, revival fire to fall from heaven and for great reformation to come to our land. The greatest opportunity to be a hub here in Winston County. To be a servant. To be alive. To be active in our faith. To be able to speak truth in love. And to make a change in our communities, in our families, and, and in our great nation of America for such a time as this. You know what started in early March of this year with the COVID-19 and thereafter for the riots and all that's been done in America and how people all over America are throwing off restraint. Everywhere it seems like iniquity abounds. People casting off restraint and are treating sacred things 
as though that they are not sacred anymore. People calling what's evil good and good evil right and saying that it's wrong now. Or what once was wrong, that it's okay now. You see, I believed with all of my heart by now that we would have seen a change. A change in our nation and right here in our community and in Winston County. Yes, there's a remnant that has made some changes. But I believe by far there's a lot more changes that has to be made. It's time to blow the trumpet in Zion. And that doesn't mean that everybody listening to this sermon tonight needs to go out and buy a shofar and begin sounding it. Now that may be something that God wants us to do when we get first things in order with God. Because he's talking about in Joel not only rending the things on the outside to make them look good when our inside of our hearts are not made right with God. When we look good on the outside and we can go through all the motions of Christianity but our hearts being far from God when the same things that have been infecting this county for years and years and years and years and years and spiritual strongholds here, which the spirit of jealousy among churches and pastors, the spirit of racism, just to mention a few, and the spirit of addiction and lust and pornography, just to mention a few of strongholds that hold so many captives, yet we continue to go through the motions at large. I'm not saying everyone, and I'm certainly not no one's judge, but I'm hearing what God is saying. You believe that? You can say amen tonight. But the title of the sermon tonight is If. You know, all of God's promises are yes and amen. But it's all contingent on if. That's a little word. But with great authority and power that is released upon the people of God that will release the greatest awakening, revival fire will fall from heaven on the church of America and on this region right here in Winston County if we respond to the Lord God and begin to let God deal with the things of the heart that we have harbored for so long. You know, unbelievers that are out here, they are looking at you and I and saying, where is the God in whom you claim to believe? Where is God? Would you show me the God in whom you believe and give me a reason to believe in the God that you say that you serve? And unfortunately, a lot of lives that say that I'm a Christian, that I'm the image of Jesus, and I'm a churchgoer, do not image the image of Jesus Christ. In other words, people look at you and I and say, give me a reason that I should believe in a God that I cannot see when I don't see God in you. I don't see your life any different than mine. You gossip and complain. You even talk about people you go to church with. 
You even talk about your pastor. You talk about one another. That's no different than what I do. You secretly do a lot of sinful things. You hide them. You wear a mask. And I've even witnessed you cuss others out at work and say awful things about our boss. Give me a reason to believe in the God that you say that you serve. Where is God in all of this? I'm going to tell you. God is right in the middle of all that everything that's going on. I don't believe that God caused it. We've allowed it. Because that's what it means to be a kingdom priest and priestess that walks in authority and the dominion of God that He has given us. We've allowed these things to happen. We have sat back and done nothing. For prayer to be taken out of the schools of America, for abortion to be legalized, and many, many, many other things. And now we're facing in our nation that just because a few want to see monuments that have meant a lot to the heritage of this nation torn down. And just because that the 9-11 monuments and commemoration of those that lost their lives at 9-11, they want it stopped and done away with. And then we, as God's people, sit back and do nothing. I guess you could call us at large the church of the do-nothingers. It's a shame. And it's a shame to the body of Jesus Christ. But I got good news for you. In 2018, God gave me an amazing vision that He was about to pour out His glory again. And His Spirit again upon this nation. That He was bringing, He showed me vividly in a vision of the Lord, whether you believe it or not, I lie not. God showed me that vision. I can never forget it. That God showed me how He would bring the greatest awakening, revival fire from heaven, and bring reformation to this community here in Haleyville, as well as the entire county of Winston County, and that it would affect all the region around us, and revival would begin in Alabama that would sweep the nation of America. Do you believe that? Can you give God some praise right now for that? I titled the sermon tonight, If. Because I believe that's what God said, If. And it's based on 2 Chronicles 7, 14. And oh, you may be out there and you say, Oh, I've heard that sermon preached before. But did you receive what God said? That's the question. Did you receive what God said? Are you doing? What God said. You know, when we do what God says, then He hears from heaven and He pours out His blessings upon His people. Second Chronicles 7 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, number one, and pray, number two, and seek my face, number three, and number four, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Listen to me. What is going on with coronavirus? What is going on with the riotous things that we're seeing in America and the loss of respect in America and the loss of respect for our patriotism and the flag of America and the 9-11 monuments of America and by all means of things that people are doing that are absolutely ridiculously crazy like driving through a Home Depot and with a car and then loading up things in that car while the store is full of people and then driving out of 
the storm. Never heard of anything like that in my life. But that just happened last week here in Alabama. Well, I believe it's time that every individual and we stop looking at other people to do what we need to be doing ourselves. Yes, grace is free. Salvation is free. But truth also comes with grace. We need to self-examine our hearts and see why, God, why COVID-19 has not been eradicated in our country. Why is all of this racism still going on in America? Why, God, is all these things that cause fear when your word says that you have not given us a spirit of fear but a power of love and a sound mind? Why is all of these things still happening, God? Is there something that I can do? Or do we just sit still and do nothing until it comes knocking on our door? I'm speaking to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Doesn't matter what tag you got on your door. Whether you're a Baptist or a Methodist or Church of God, Pentecostal, non-denom, Church of Christ, it doesn't matter who you are. We are one family of one kingdom in God and it is time that the body of Christ stop talking about one another. Stop judging one another. Stop trying to compete pastors and churches and trying to look good that you're better and you got better things than other pastors and churches have. It is time to stop it. Stop it. Stop it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is time to unify the body of Christ in our region here in Winston County. It is time to unify the body of Christ in Winston County. Do you believe that? Say amen. Are we going to just keep doing the same things that we've been doing and hoping for different results? It's time that we unite together no matter our denominational backgrounds, no matter our ethnic groups, no matter our nationality or skin color, it's time that we recommit our lives to God Almighty individually and corporately. It's time that we confess and let God Almighty examine our heart and see if there be any wicked way in me. It's time to repent and humble ourselves and pursue Jesus Christ with passion from our hearts to truly know Him and know who we are in Christ. It's time to not live in fear, but live by faith in everything that we do. It's time we choose to forgive all that have hurt us or offended us in any way. It doesn't matter. It's time to forgive and let the offense go. It's time we pray and ask God to graciously forgive us individually and corporately as the church in this region and to forgive our nation for not putting God first within all the functions of our society in which this nation was founded on the Word of God and our Constitution was written by using the Word of God. Then and only then can you and I rest assured and know that God will respond to His promise of 2 Chronicles 7, 14 and heal our land of everything that's going on and annihilate coronavirus if we as God's people, we're not talking about our wonderful president, Donald Trump, we're not talking about the governor of our state. We're not talking about the Congress or the Democrats or the Republicans or, 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 or whoever, the independents. We cannot depend upon them. We must put our trust in our faith in the Lord God Almighty, Jehovah God, the great I Am, Jesus Christ.
And when we do, we are guaranteed that God's promise will come. So ask yourself, why hasn't it come? Has all this going on changed me? Or am I just living in fear? Have I got myself right with God? Am I ready to actually go to heaven? Am I ready for the rapture? Have I come clean with God and everybody that has hurt me or offended me? Or are you just sitting back and doing nothing? God called us to be an active people. An active people or a faithful people that will do the impossibilities. God is calling you and I tonight as His church body to walk in the impossibilities and believe for greater things than that we have ever seen. I'm not a prophet of doom. I believe in the great awakening that's about to be poured out on this nation. I believe in a great revival fire that millions will be saved and added to the kingdom of God. I believe in a great reformation, not only of Winston County and surrounding counties in Alabama, but for the whole United States of America. And that will sweep across the world because I believe it's going to be the greatest worldwide revival that this world has ever seen. I'm looking forward to it. And I believe that in my lifetime, I will see it happen. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. You see, if means that God's promise is conditional based on mine and your response to God's instructions and His commands. Yes, His commands. Obedience is better than sacrifice. God wants His children to once again, if you love Him, Jesus said, you'll obey Him. The promise is that God says, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive your sin and I will heal your land. If that promise is not true, then the rest of this isn't either. But I know better than that and I know that you know better than that. All God's promises are yes and amen. Every single one of them. So what is God's instructions here for you and I? First is to humble yourself. Well, some people don't even know what that means. It means to take a posture of lowering yourself of self-centeredness and relying on your absolute need for Jesus in everyday life, in every function of your life. It also means that there's no room for fleshly pride and self-exaltation. There's no room for that. Humble is a Greek word, kana, and it means to bend the knee. It means to humiliate and vanquish, to defeat and overcome the flesh, the self-centered life in exchange for the life and the spirit of the Holy Spirit of God. It means to bring down low and be in subjection under the rule of Almighty God in His Word. And if you are, let me give you a test for that. You won't have a problem submitting to one another. You won't have a problem submitting at your workplace. You won't have a problem with somebody giving you truth and love. You won't have a problem with correction if it's done in the right manner and you know that the person has your best interest at heart. You'll receive that. If you're a person that thinks that you know everything and nobody can teach or tell you anything, then you're an unsubmitted person. It's time for you to find your place on a bended knees, on bended knees at the feet of Jesus and let Him heal you of that. As you confess that to the Lord Jesus, He'll raise you up. 
and, and put you in your rightful place in Him. So what does humble really look like? And what must you do to humble yourself? It, is, it means to fully submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It means to follow His Word and obey His commandments. It is loving God, loving one another, and submitting to one another and stop judging one another. We only have one judge, one Lord, and one faith. You and I do not have a reason to judge anyone. You know, a person that judges and criticizes other people, it's a fleshly way to promote pride and arrogance, and it will make you feel better about yourself for about 30 seconds. It never lasts. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 7, 1, Judge not, lest you be judged, because what measuring rule that you use on somebody else, you're going to get it back even more so to your own self, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Because Jesus was talking about that in Luke chapter 6. To give, and it shall be given to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. He wasn't talking about giving money, which a lot of pastors and preachers use to get you to give more money. He was talking about mercy, love, and forgiveness. So as you give mercy, love, and forgiveness, it's going to be measured back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over with other people give to you. It's time that we humble ourselves. So what does humility look like? James chapter 4 and verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and He will lift you up. James chapter 4 verse 11. Do not speak evil of one another. This is humility. He who speaks evil of a brother or sister judges his brother or sister, speaks evil of the law, and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you're not a doer of the law, but a judge. James chapter 4, verse 12, There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy, and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Who are you judging? So what does humility look like, Pastor? 1 Peter 5 and verse 5 and 6 and 7. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. You know, I've never lived in such a time that young people, now I'm not talking about all of them. We have a lot of wonderful young people here, and I'm sure you do too. But most young people are not trained up in the love and admonition of the Lord and learn respect for their parents, much less elders, They've not been taught respect, integrity, and to work, and, and, and ethics that are meaningful, and patriotism, and history about things that truly matter to God, which is God first, family, church, friends, and all the other comes under all of that first. But submit yourselves to your elders. <laughs> I don't like that. You're preaching the law. Listen to me. That's not law. That is 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 5. You see, you may not like it, but those commandments, Jesus said, are not burdensome. No. It actually is what gives you freedom to live life and live it to the full, my friend. Can somebody say amen right there? You see, Peter goes on to say, all of you be submissive to one another. That means everybody, including pastors, prophets, apostles, teachers. That means all of the fivefold ministry. We all are supposed to be subject and submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. 
For God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. This means you are placing yourself under King Jesus' rule because you know now that he is Lord. You see, what's wrong with a lot of American Christians is that you have never made Jesus your Lord. You think you have your own rights. When you surrendered your life, if you were truly born of the Spirit of God, the first thing you must confess is Jesus is my Lord. I die to self so that I live for Christ. He is my Lord. Therefore, He can be your Savior if He's your Lord. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him for He cares for you. This means when you take the posture of humility, God truly got you and He will provide and take care of you. And it comes through humility. So what does humility look like? At the Last Supper, the communion, we call it in the church today, of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was actually the Passover. Judas was there. He leaves, but he didn't leave without getting his feet washed. Satan had already entered and influenced Judas, but Judas was present at the foot washing. Jesus, the Lord and Master, knew that, G, that, that, he, that Judas would betray him, but Jesus humbled him Self and gave us the example of humility. He served Judas. He taught Judas. Judas walked with Jesus for three years. He was there for the miracles. He was there for the sign. He saw Lazarus raised from the dead. Jesus even gave Judas the money back and he knew he was a thief from the beginning because he wanted to see Judas, repent. It didn't have to be Judas. It would have been somebody. But it didn't have to be. Jesus knew what was in Judas's heart. He knew what would follow Judas's betrayal. He knew the beatings were coming. He knew the scourging was coming. He knew the agonizing walk of Golgotha's hill and the crucifixion and the torture of the cross. He knew it, but he humbled himself and he washed Judas's feet. I want you to think about that for a minute. See, this is not just meant to tell us what Jesus did. It's to give us the example to do what Jesus did. And we somewhat think that we have the right to judge a brother or sister or condemn or speak evil about them behind closed doors to somebody else. And a lot of that's going on in America's churches. Yet Jesus humbled himself. He got down on his knees. He took hold of Judas' feet. Judas' feet one by one. And with love and compassion, he washed the betrayer's feet. Jesus has called you and I also to love one another and to put others' needs before our own. And my friend, that includes others that would betray you, that would sell you out, that would lie about you, that would hurt you, that would curse you, that would offend you, that would say all matter of evil against you. Really? Yep, really. You see, loving, serving, and placing someone like Judas before my own needs... This is what God means in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. By humbling yourself. 
You see, if you are living a humble life, it will be in your actions, not by what you say alone. Because what you say is meaningless unless it is followed by action. John 13 and 14 and 15, If I then, your Lord and teacher, has washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. That's a command. It's not a suggestion. And we've got so politically correct in the church and so dignified in the church that we won't let the Holy Spirit move on us. Because it makes us uncomfortable in most of America's churches. And it seems like to me that most of the churches in America that are packed out and packed full is because the pastors and leaders there have made their flesh comfortable. My friend, that does not give room for the Holy Spirit to lead. You and I are here to serve. We're here to love and to do the same for others as Jesus has done for you and I. We are here to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all our needs will be provided by the Lord. We're here to love and to serve one another. Even those that betray us, hurt us, gossip about us, or offend us, or even turn their backs on us. Jesus calls us to forgive, release them. We're here as the image of Jesus to serve and to love others as He has loved and continues to serve us. So the, see, washing the feet of another exhibits humility through a loving relationship, serving and giving. In other words, I wash my brother's feet because I know what it's like for mine to be washed. I know the dirt that, I, that used to cling to my sinful life. Therefore, I commit to the Lord to never, no, never accuse a brother or sister or speak evil of you or judge you or bring up any dirt of your past because your past was purchased by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And your past is eternally Washed away. So in closing tonight. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. And I will heal their land. Do you want COVID-19 gone? Do you want the riots in America gone? Do you want the extreme leftist born again of the Spirit of God? Not to just agree with you, but to agree with God and be saved because it's not God's will that any perish, but come to repentance and be saved. Do you want that? Do you want to see America a great Christian nation again? that are sending out missionaries all over the world and where a world is all of a sudden experiencing great awakening and revival and reformation. Do you want that? I do. Do you want to see Winston County lit up with fire, the fire of God, that I pray tonight that you would pray this prayer along with me with all of your heart if you would agree with me in prayer tonight by speaking out loud what I'm about to pray. Let us unite together. Let us lay our differences down and quit judging one another. Quit criticizing one another. Let's one love one another. Let's unite together as one body of Christ 
in Winston County. One body of Christ in Winston County. Let us pray together as one voice tonight to our God, our Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, would you repeat this prayer after me tonight? Heavenly Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we are your people called by your name. I'm a disciple and a follower of Jesus, Father. I take the position of humility tonight in the name of Jesus Christ and I choose to humble myself under your mighty right hand. I seek your face tonight and forevermore. I desire a passionate relationship with you, Lord. I repent and return to my first love in Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Father God, we ask you individually and corporately as the church of Winston County and of this region to forgive us of any and all sins, iniquity, wicked, evil ways. We turn from our fleshly, worldly ways, O oh God, and we repent tonight. We turn wholeheartedly to you with a whole heart, God. Forgive me. Wash me, heal me, and forgive us as your church and wash us and heal us. We are your people that are called by your name and we are humbling ourselves tonight. Forgive your church of Winston County in this region for idolizing personalities, elevating pastors and and, 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 and teachers and prophets and apostles and, and, and personalities uh, over other people. Forgive your church, O oh God, of our programs that were wrought, not really orchestrated by you, but we used them in a way to call people in to fill our seats. It filled seats, but it did not fill heaven. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for placing things and people before you. We humble ourselves before you this night and clothe ourselves with humility. We look to you tonight, the only true God, from where our help comes from. Father, we are thankful tonight for the church body. We are thankful for the leadership of apostles, prophets, pastors, and teachers in the body of Christ. We are thankful for them all. And the evangelist God, we ask that you raise up true evangelists tonight, oh God. We thank you for the ones that we know. And we thank you for those that you are birthing in the land, God, that will preach the unadulterated word, your word, God, that would bring about conviction of sin, that you would use their mouth as a shofar, that would bring people all over our communities and over this nation, revival and through repentant hearts and humility. We are thankful for five-fold leadership. We are thankful for kingdom government. We are asking you to heal our land tonight and to heal all persons that have been infected with COVID-19. We humbly ask you today, this day, this night, to completely eradicate and destroy coronavirus in the name of of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask you tonight, Father God, to heal our land of wickedness and racism and false doctrine and apostasy. Heal our land, oh God. We pray this night for our president, 
the Congress, the House of Representatives, and every person that consults each and every facet of our government in the United States of America. God, we pray for those that follow you, that you would give them wisdom and knowledge and understanding. And we also pray for those that have their own agendas that seem to be so far off of what your word says. We ask you to have mercy on them. We ask you for conviction of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Of sin that they need a Savior. Of righteousness that they can become your righteousness. And of judgment that they don't have to face the great white throne judgment. And say depart from me for I never knew you. And burn eternally in hell. Father we ask you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. To save them. Save them. Save them and heal them Father. We pray these prayers tonight. To the only true and living God. Jesus Christ. And it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining, joining tonight. Hope to see you Sunday. We worship here at 1030, here at the church sanctuary. We'll go live at 11 with the message this Sunday. Next Wednesday, we'll be back with Jennifer and Wayne Sanford for an amazing testimony. Our first testimony from a married couple. Look forward to that. I really look forward to that. I pray that you receive the Word of God tonight. And more so, I pray that you do what God says. God bless you all. In the name of Jesus and Sister Janet Willis, I didn't forget you. God bless you. And thank you for your funny today. It brought joy in my heart. God bless you all tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.